Michael Brakely Lancaster. I'm the executive director and curator of the Mississippi Valley Textile Museum. Well, the first thing um, for me when I entered the building, I just automatically saw we need to make a plan to fix this place up. It's a national historic site and it really needed TLC. Um, so we first made a 10 year plan to, to fix up the building and uh, conserve the facility. We got tests done to find out the original colors of the paint of the walls and ceilings and then repainted them back to those colors. It's kind of a first statement when you walk in. Then we replaced the glass in the two main uh, entrance doors. Um, they were gone and just clear glass, but we replaced them with uh, glue chip glass, which is what was originally there. It was certainly a part of the 10-year plan to, to enhance security and protection of this, uh, the space, so we got grant funding to add a security and fire detection system. The other thing we did, when I started, we really have had a, a challenge with parking, so we decided to remove a, a couple of trees from the back of the museum and add 10 parking spaces. So we got funds to uh, pave that and then also um, move towards accessibility for people with mobility limitations, so we added ramps. Um, as well as automated door openers going throughout the building so that people can access both floors. Some of the main improvements in our art gallery space for textiles has been, um, for one, adding track lighting. Um, it was very dark and kind of gloomy in here. Also new flooring. Um, there were holes in the floors when I started. It really was an unsafe environment. And then we also added emergency exit doors. Um, the other doors, I mean, you couldn't barely get out of them in an emergency, so certainly now we have metal doors for fire uh, safety, but then with a, white, a wood facing on them so they look like old doors. Um, and then the plaster conservation, which to me is a pillar. Um, when you walk about, you can actually see some graffiti uh, on them from mill workers. So I ensured and really wanted to preserve and save that as, as kind of a monument to, to the workers. And so another accessibility aspect that we added to the gallery was um, an elevator to get you between the first floor and second floor for people with mobile limitations. And boy, was that exciting the day that opened that we could actually just say to people, no, you can go right on in in your wheelchair or walker. The second level is our history exhibit called Fabric of a Small Town. And we spray foam insulated the ceiling up there. It was just a raw roof structure. Um, and just the, as soon as that was done, everyone downstairs went, what just happened? And I said, we just finished ins insulating upstairs. And then followed that with drywall, so it's nice and clean and bright, and then track lighting throughout. The transformation of that alone was so huge. Another big project we did in partnership with our local library we went through, um, they, had re, um, they had digitized their full 150 years of the Almont Gazette. Then we got grant funding then to take that and um, put uh, read software over all the 150 years. And then we put that onto our website as a search tool that people can now keyword search through 150 years of the Almont Gazette. And we averaged 10,000 hits a month. We um, started over a year ago um, and we put up a rainbow flag in front of the museum because we noticed that our community never ever put one out that I ever knew of. And I could see people coming out younger and younger in different identities or sexualities and I wanted to make sure they knew they had a safe space. It's really important to acknowledge that the land on which this museum is built on is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I went to school for six years with the intent of working in a small community museum where I could be doing curating art and history exhibitions and I have found that dream job 13 years ago and I'm so proud to be here still today and honored to do this work for the community and engage the community in this organization and in the community itself.